Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the McConaughey at YouTube with a, another model video. Today we'll get back to doing a 70 second build by Roden, the SD KFZ 234-1, a German heavy reconnaissance armored car used in the later stages of the Second World War, also known as a Puma that I've seen on other kits. Could be a bit wrong, but it's a later period vehicle that has uh, various different attachments. This one uh, having an anti-aircraft gun and a mesh or open top. Following suit with the modern trend of most smaller kits from China and Eastern Europe, a lot of the information on the back regarding paint colours scheme and roughly what you get in an almost life-size presentation is at the rear of the box with enough supporting information inside in the instructions not the best instructions in the world but fairly easy enough to follow through to build or finish the build without the requirement of too much reference material a slide of decals as well as four runners two in black two in light grey. You are also given two times more mesh than you really need to complete the build. Heading straight to the first steps we're applying the mesh to the roof of the turret. Cutting out to shape I use the gun the marker to outline a pattern and trim it as closely as possible and further cut off the stiffened end with a hobby knife. It was all applied with super glue for greater ease. Having a bit too much overhang does uh, add a bit of a uh, gap or poor fitting to the rest of the hull. Finishing that, going to the rest of the components that make the inner part of the hull, the uh, seats, the flooring, the machine gun, very intricate, very detailed parts, quite um, appreciated for something that's quite um, detailed and with the extra seats and the inner components inside the vehicle gives you the opportunity to have an open vehicle something in maintenance or even purchase 70 second sitting figures to fit inside as the parts are fairly detailed and unfortunately a bit small they can be quite fiddly and quite a bit of time is required for the glue to set before you move to the next stage for a more rapid build super glue would probably be a better opportunity but a tad more fiddly you'll also notice a lot of the parts will have very thick gates to remove from the sprues as well as quite a thick flash to clean up around barreled or round parts the turret and the inside of the hull took me a couple of sessions of about an hour or so to put together utilizing plastic cement and reinforced later with super glue. I do have to point out that the hull with the sliding molds is very well proportioned and super crisp in detail. The fit of the two halves and the turret going on top is uh, quite tight and a very nice experience. Thoroughly enjoyed this proportion of the build, definitely my favourite. Lots of stowage, where the handles, the machine guns and the antennas are probably far too thick for my taste and if you're to go quite in depth with this build I am aware online uh, through Google you can acquire aftermarket parts or utilize some scratch building methods to get thinner aerials. The wheels, which aren't quite the best, resin alternatives are also available. Flipping underneath the hull and looking at the running gear, again, very detailed and nicely proportioned, but some of the very fine components that connect the wheels have a tendency of being quite uh, warped and was a very heavy process in cleaning up and removing the mold parting line. The wheels are also a two halves requiring 
putty to fill it and sand it in. Sticking it together made it very uh, fragile. The super glue utilized to support and quite a bit of uh, time needed in positioning and flattening the wheels to the ground. I did not get it uh, done very well. It would be probably suitable to go on a diorama with the earth contoured underneath the wheels, sort of like suspension being. Each shell of the hull is finely detailed and assembled, hardened. Once the suspension and running gear is fully hard, after a session of curing, the wheels can go on after as a bit of a tip. The two halves of the hulls are so tightly fitted, you're able to have it removable to have an internal diorama or completely decked out for later inspection. Very happy how this is able to be polished up. A lot of the complaints are made are just tedious and basic scale modeling skills can fix it up. Further polishing can be applied until the model is fully decked out with aftermarket parts so that it can be pretty much a small scale showstopper. Definitely can recommend this build. With a finished build we get straight into the painting which was a few hours job. Nothing too fancy, mostly testing out a new airbrush system. The usual coat of Tamiya Grey primer to seal everything in a uniform colour as it's contrasting with the black and grey plastic with an undercoat of oxidised red by Gaia Note. Two tones of camouflage for the three main German colours may not be 100% accurate, shaded on the sand and tightly detailed around with the green and rust colours. The smallest stowage and details were hand painted in lacquers, one or two maybe acrylics, whatever colours I had in hand. Applied aftermarket decals which were a little easier to use than the two half of the black and white German cross. Bit of uh, sludge wash of uh, black to pick up all the detail. The details are very deep and any form of painting hand or airbrushing can pick up and be very impactful. A bit more dirtying of the wheels and underneath the chassis. A little liquid black or smoke, clear smoke, to darken the undercarriage with a final matte clear to finish it all up. Highlighted some of the edges with a weathering pencil and called it finish pretty much uh, done with it as there's mounding larger projects and deadlines looming. I was only really looking for a mental build, something that was quick to flip over. This was a bit more involved, but I have to mention as someone who builds a lot of uh, armor kits, my general preferences are from light to medium tanks, but building armored cars with wheels or half track from time to time is uh, very fascinating and a very nice structural shake up to what you usually used to in a ton thousand bits for the wheels and the tracks and the rest of the hull just falling into place. The weird shapes of particularly the German armoured cars or the earlier British ones will uh, give you very fun chassis to look and appreciate in your collection. Brands don't matter too much. I've done everything from this to Airfix and always been rewarded with an outcome of something different to pose with the rest of my heavier tanks. You will definitely have a lot of fun with this subgenre of armor. In the way of my efforts and finish this, it's a bit mediocre. Definitely not the finest work out there. But I'm just really glad that something is finished and presented after not a lot of building in the past few months. And a few other projects more intricate and time invested will be rolling off the workshop floor quite quickly. Thank you very much for watching as always. Until next time, stay tuned for further content. 
always have a look at the description down below with more history of the armor and what I've roughly done to the model as well as links to social media you will uh, come across work in progresses and finished models before they're made in a video format the channel also has a series of uh, playlists dividing all the different form of tutorials and modeling that I do and very happy to answer any questions in the comment section down below thank you very much for watching and see you later